Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris and I'm bringing you this lovely cryptocurrency video right from Westlake Village, California. And it is Wednesday afternoon around 2.30 after we've seen quite a bit of volatility in the markets. Micro strategies bought a bunch of Bitcoin yesterday. The price ripped here in the morning to the upside and then right back to the downside. Right back to the downside and getting back to that weekend trap box, that kind of a rejection and getting back down uh, does goose odds in the favor of the bears once again. So uh, what would I be looking at? Ultimately just a test of this trend line, probably a bounce off of it. But now this looks like just, that looks like a W, right? So on the hourly time frame. Are we going to get any momentum back to the upside? Well, as volatility declines and we see the stochastic cross back up, which is our momentum indicator, we should get maybe a mean reverted bounce. But what else is going on right now is we are in the dead gap zone. That is when the futures market shuts down for three hours. Is it three hours? It's right here between 2.30 and 5.30. Yeah, three hours. Futures are shut down. Asian market will open back up around 1,730 hours, like we're in the military, guys. So what am I looking at on the shorter term time frames if I was going to look for a move down? Really quick, I'll just draw this out for you. Little ascending triangle, which is typically going to break out to the upside. Uh, but on the 15 minute time frame, we do have momentum about to cross back down below 26,280, which is the big pivot on the market, that 26,3 number. And back above here, probably going to give an attempt back at that box. And I wonder where that box is in the not 0.5 and the 618, right in the middle there. So. The measure move on something like this would be right at the bottom side of the range. And yeah, if we lose that wick, well, um, I expect a tap down to about 25.8. 25.8 looks like it's going to be in the cards. What else happened today? Um, now, if we do break it on an hourly basis to the upside, I'm looking for a run at the 618 at 26.5. Uh, so this was a big liquidity hunt on Bitcoin. That's exactly what it was. The market maker pushed it up, pushed it down, stopped everybody out and, um, uh, yeah, got everybody, got everybody, everybody who put their stop losses right above here and then sent it right back down. Um, so Hey, you got those stop losses in, you will live to trade another day. But just talking about this dead gap zone here brings up to my attention here. Well, number one, Ethereum. Let's, I'll, I'll just go over this really quick. Short term liquidity to the downside. Uh, looks like we're going to get pushed down to this level. This will activate further stop loss. <laughs> uh, Basically, liquidations to the downside, that means that people are going to, people that are long here are going to get liquidated here, wherever they went long from. So shorts will be activated as those hit, and that very likely does send Ethereum down to about 1579, which is the next major liquidity zone. I think that's an easy play. And essentially, as long as we are closing hourlies on Ethereum below this level, below this level right here, I'd say pressure's on to the downside, to the downside. And looks like a bit of a inverted head and shoulders. And uh, same thing, measure move on this one is likely, uh, you know, back up to this level. Where's the 0.5 and the 618? 
kind of in no man's land. So big inefficiency candle to the upside, to the downside, and we are back right in it and back below that trend line, uh, which is the major trend line coming in on the weekly trend. All the way back from the pivot low there. So uh, the bearish angle, where's the 50%? <clears throat> Maybe I should draw this a little bit higher, no? Yeah, we're gonna have three points of confluence there, boom. And measure move down. Wow, 925, that, that's tough. And remember, we are cooking a massive move on the weekly time frame. You can see on this exchange, which is what, Bybit? It's the lowest weekly volatility and we have already begun expansion. We're not above 25%, giving us that full move in swing. And how big of a move is that? Holy smokes. I don't think this is going to happen, but that's 40%, 50%. It's not out of the question, so be prepared. And I'd say there's going to be a stop along the way right here at this node at 1295. Um, but if I was the market maker, I'd be gunning for those levels. So short term, it looks down um, and they're probably going to grab this liquidity right here for sure. And then I wouldn't be surprised if they bounce it back up and grab that liquidity and then send it down. But that's, and people are net long right now. So longs are more likely to get liquidated also. And a big pink node here down at that 1545 level. And that does line up with the heat map for Ethereum. And so I think that's gonna be it for that one. What do you know guys? If you've been watching our channel for some time, weekly silver cross, broke the trend line, heading up to the 0.5 and the 618. It is a beautiful retracement, right up. So probably got a little bit more to go. Dollars looking bullish. NASDAQ bouncing off the gap fill. Did we finally fill the gap? Not quite, not quite. And we did say, hey, we wanna see how it reacts off this area. Needs to come a little bit lower, if you ask me. S&P filled the gap. And Dow Jones, I don't think it had a gap down here. Do I see any other gaps? Maybe on the four hour time frame, there's a gap somewhere. Four hour looks bouncy for, for to be fair. Yeah, four hour looks like it wants to uh, at least take a run up to this guy, probably all the way up to here at uh, 34 to 90. VIX coming down means uh, stocks go up. Bearish divergence in play, yes indeed. And two drives gets you a shot to the 21, three drives down here. Do we have a third drive? Yes, we do. So three drives, I would say the VIX comes down and that could lead to a bit of a bounce. That certainly could lead to a bit of a bounce here. Um, what else is on the board? Huh, what else is on the board, guys? Um, so that, that helps out the, uh, the bulls. Total market cap, not doing much. Um, Bitcoin, CMEs. I think that's going to wrap it up for today. I will point out this again, which is what I've talked about yesterday on the two-day time frame, Bitcoin did put in its uh, second drive of bearish divergence, which typically gets you a play back to the bottom side of the range. 25,148 would be the bounce, uh, the bounce target. And if, um, if we fail to cross back above 26,3, which we made an attempt, got rejected, if this crosses down and volatility begins to expand, that would be probably good enough for me to say, hey, we're gonna send it down, down a bit further than we're at today. Um, but like I said, short-term uh, liquidity on Bitcoin and ETH is just a little bit lower. Um, I guess I never went over that. And 
that was Ethereum. I had it on. So let's check out BTC. Oh boy. Bitcoin liquidity to the upside. Big 12 million, 13 million. Bitcoin did not get a bit of a retracement. Uh, people are net short now. Interesting. Bunch of uh, levered long. So I would be thinking, looks like Bitcoin, well, Ethereum looks like it's coming down. And, um, you know, since the pressure on the higher term time frames is angled down alongside the dollar ripping to the upside, well, that, that certainly could be um, an area of interest for Bitcoin down here at 25.860. I do think if we do just take out this wick, we're probably going to come all the way down here. Um, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Just wanted to give you my thoughts on the market today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe. I will see you next time and have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.